Hi folks, Bryony Thomas here. I'm the author and founder here at Watertight Marketing. And I'm jumping on today to chat you through the latest post on the Watertight Marketing blog. What we do every month in the um, in the members club, so over in our members club Facebook group, which you get to by registering the copy of the book, is we ask everyone to vote on the topic of focus for the month ahead. Um, and we use this to for me to create a um, a tutorial for uh, the members of our plus community and if you want access to that tutorial right now I put together a tutorial on creating product ladders which I did last Wednesday um, and you can access to that immediately uh, by signing up to plus at watertightmarketing.com forward slash plus. Now the other thing I do is to um, base, use that vote as the basis for kicking off um, a post in on our blog and that's what I want to talk to you about today. The question is to ask you whether or not your potential buyers can picture your products and services before they buy them. Because if they can picture them before they buy them, they are more likely to do so. And I have... Um, Whenever I talk to people about this, it fits in product ladders, it fits in visualizing and experiencing what it's like to be a customer before they are one, um, which is leak number four, no gateway in the touchpoint leak framework from the book. And I talk to lots of people about this, whether you are, whether you've got a tangible product, like a, you know, a thing that you sell, or whether perhaps you sell your knowledge um, in a consulting setup or something like that. Um, some people sell online, some people off offline, and some a combination of both. And so what I've done in this week's post is just to be really, really practical and give you a rundown of the sorts of things that you can do to help people picture your products before they buy them, which means that they are more likely to do so. So first of all, in the post that you can grab on our website, and I've popped a link in the comments, you can, um, first of all, think about tangible products. So if you sell actual things um, uh, you know, that you can touch and feel, how do you get people to experience touching and feeling them before they actually own that product? So what I've put on the um, list on the blog is, first of all, to um, put your products into a store. So you can have your own store or potentially you can place your products in the stores of others, independent retailers, or, of course, get them listed by retailers. This is why people fight for ILNs um, and that sort of thing. In an ideal world, what you would do in a store setting is potentially run product demos. We've all seen this on, on things like QVC and Home Shopping Channel. Or at least um, if you haven't seen them, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so people actually go in and do a product demo, mopping the floor or whatever it might be. So if you have something that you can demonstrate in a store, then do it. If you are a greetings card um, designer, have a look at going into a store and doing a, um, a crafting session on how to create, how you do your um, how you do your cards, whatever it might be. If you can't get into a store, then you can, of course, do pop-ups and exhibitions. So you can exhibit at shows and ideally demoing and get people to... Um, um, touch and feel and people do this in consumer and they do this in business to business you know there's wedding shows where people get to try on dresses and see the cakes and all of that but it's equally important in things like the tech industry um, where people will see the latest technology and big b2b technology shows and um, crm shows and all of that so it's not just in consumer um, that these big shows can work so have a think about um, how you demonstrate your product in that context as well as touch and feel you can, of course, send small samples. So um, any of us who's ever done up a house is familiar with this, is when you take a small pot of paint home and paint your wall with a sample and then go and buy a big pot or a strip of fabric to have a look at your curtains. We can offer these sorts of things. We can offer small samples, send little um, snippets of things um, on request and that sort of thing. And then the other thing that you can have a think about is product placement. So if you were selling beautiful things for homes and gardens, could you get your products um, used in a boutique hotel with a name on it that demonstrates that it's your product? This is why you will see um, top end cosmetics in in-flight toiletry bags or in the rooms of hotels and that sort of thing. It's a product placement. So if you sell real things, um, those are some ways that you can get people to um, get their hands on them before they buy them. Now, if you sell tangible products, but you sell them online, so people aren't touching and feeling them before they buy, then there are still some things you can do. The first and most obvious is really powerful photography. Now, 
you're going to need photography from multiple angles um, and showing your product in context. And one of the things I would say if you are selling something tangible is always have something in the photography that allows people to assess the relative size of your products and services so they know whether it's going to fit in their space. One example uh, is from uh, one of our clients, or Denzo. They have at least five photos of every single one of their products, and one of them is always in context. Um, so do make sure you do that. You can step that up with video. Um, so lots of the fashion websites have this now where you click on the video and there's a, a little catwalk idea But you could do video yourself I mean you could hold up your product and turn it round and talk about how you designed it or whatever it might be so step up your photography the next step up from that is video or um, if you really want to uh, Kind of bring it to life you might do animation so you might animate um, the product so do a rotation where they can kind of interact with the product on screen those can be really really powerful so those are some ways to get people to picture tangible products now let's go on to intangible products so if you're selling your knowledge then you need to work harder to make the um, product or service appear tangible because we like to feel that we're going to get our hands on things in marketing academia this is called physical evidence so providing physical evidence is why banks often send you a little account card with your details on and that sort of thing not not the one you put in the machine a little welcome card for online banking it's something to get your hands on a welcome pack that sort of thing so some ideas for you in making sure that um, people can visualize intangible products is first of all to consider whether you might be able to do a process flow diagram or a creative con conceptualization so can you create a diagram or a picture that demonstrates your methodology or your approach one of the most successful um, positioning and ownership of a diagram that I've seen in recent years is Simon Sinek and so he's taken that bullseye target the three circles which I'm sure as I'm talking about you can probably picture it one of the key things that he's done is he's given it a name he's, he's called it the golden circle it's always done with the same kind of font so he sort of branded the diagram have a think about creating something like that for your own knowledge-based business whether it's a process flow a conceptual visualization or a metaphor own the image get it beautifully designed and uh, simply done so that people can draw it themselves and that takes ownership of it now another way that you can get people to picture your intangible product is to create some sort of diagnostic front end tool we call this a gateway offer or potentially if it's charged for a gateway product something like a scorecard or a quiz that outputs a report that demonstrates um, your process in action and gives a little front end introduction to what you do next we love these we call them Cosmo quizzes um, and you can do a, a, a kind of skim of your product where you take the top layer and just show a little bit of all or you can do a slice of your product where you just cut off the front of your process and productize that the key thing is you give your report and your diagnostic a name um, and you show what it's going to look like as a report as a little thumbnail that people can picture the really really powerful way of um, getting people to visualize your products and an excellent example of this is Daniel Preeti's 24 assets and um, scorecard go and have a look at it the next um, thing to have a think about with intangible um, products, uh, intangible services, is to photograph the process. So make sure you've got photography of your team doing what you do. So whether that's whiteboarding, post-it noting, um, round table, so people can picture what it's going to be like to work with you. And then put those photography uh, in your product pages and on your flow diagram. Really, really important. And then the other one is to mock up what it's going to be looking like. So let's say that um, as part of your knowledge business, you do video calls or people are going to be experiencing some of your materials through, through video. Show them the uh, screen grab on a screen, on a mock up of a screen. Um, because when people can see what it's going to be like, they're more likely to, to know, OK, that's what it's going to feel like. That's what it's going to look like. I, I want that. So if you're going to be doing video calls, video content, um, you know, picture it onto a screen. If they're going to be getting a report, picture it onto a little thumbnail of a report and make it look tangible, etc. Even if that's a PDF download, um, make it look like a thing. Um, so those are some examples for knowledge businesses and helping people picture your knowledge business. Some techniques that I would say work for all products and services. So everyone could and should 
potentially do this stuff. The first is video. Video, 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 whether you're showing it, talking about it, demonstrating it, talking to clients, video rocks, um, travels well, does good stuff. The next is events, whether it's your own events or going along to other events. I mean, I'm a speaker, so clearly I'm going to say events rock. Events rock, um, particularly if you can demonstrate your diagnostic that I've just talked about and then point them on to um, your little online download or whatever it might be. But events are a way of people checking you out. This is picturing what it's going to be like to work with you before they do so. And then the other is live chats and demos. So jumping onto a call with someone, you know, giving them a, maybe a temporary logging, showing them around in a live style, answering questions. So video events and live chat are things that we can all we can all do. Some slightly out there suggestions or some things that um, are probably going to become quite big in this area in the next few years, if not already. So the first thing to think about might, might be virtual reality. So can you uh, could you do a, a you know a 360 view image? Could you get people to step into a virtual room and experience what it might be like with you? We've already seen this happening in the gaming industry. Um, it's coming. You know, uh, all of the I'm, I'm absolutely sure that all of the video conferencing services are probably uh, working on video rooms um, that we step into for our virtual meetings. So, you know, have a think about it. The next is haptics, um, which is where you make digital experiences tactile. Um, so one of the things that we've off, we've missed in digital at the moment is the sense of touch. And it's very important. But haptic technologies are starting to help people to integrate the, the sensory touch um, into digital experiences. So go and check that out. The next one is holographic projection. Yes, I said it. This is not Princess Leia from Star Wars. But there are big events already where the big name speaker is actually being um, live 3D cast onto the stage. Could you do that? Should you do that? Have a think about it because it's coming. And then the other is um, 3D printing. So at some point, we're probably all going to have 3D printers in our offices. Could people print out a mock-up or a sample of your product or service? So there are some ideas to get you going. Go and have a look at the blog post and tell me, feel free to link to your own examples. How do you get potential customers to picture your products and services before they buy them? Because when you can do that, they're much more likely to do so. Enjoy this week's blog post. I'm looking forward to your examples. Lots of love from me.